This video will show you how to record payments from customers and how to record any payments that go NSF. Both of these steps are done in the Record Payments NSF screen, which can be found in the Accounts Receivable drop-down menu. The first step is determining how you're going to record this customer payment, by an individual customer or by a customer group. If you are unaware, within the customer maintenance screen, individual customers may be noted as being part of a group, which allows reports to be run for the whole group and payments received to be applied against the outstanding receivables of any of the group members. An example of this may be multiple locations of a grocery store chain, which are billed individually, but for which one combined payment is received from the head office. We will first look at a payment being made by an individual customer. Choosing the customer populates a list of the remaining receivables outstanding for that specific customer. Details of the payment are then populated, including the amount of the payment and the method of payment. If you are choosing check for your payment, you also have to include a check number. If the customer is paying by credit card, and you have Bluelink's optional credit card processing tool, choosing a credit card opens up a new tab allowing you to enter the customer's credit card information. Alternatively, if you have Bluelink's optional credit card vault and the customer has a credit card stored on file, you will have the option to choose a credit card that is already stored on file. In this example, however, we'll use a check for this payment and entering the check number. The next step is applying the amount of the payment against the outstanding invoices. This may be done by pressing the Auto Allocate button, which will allocate the payments against the outstanding balance from the oldest to the newest, or you can manually choose which invoices to allocate the payment against. Once applied, a press of the Process Payment button processes the payment and relieves the AR and leaves the check waiting to be deposited into the bank. If you were recording a payment for a group, the functionality will work the same. However, however, after choosing group code and then choosing the appropriate group, you can see below the outstanding AR invoices for all of the companies who are a part of the group. Now, Let's say some time has passed and the customer check which we just deposited was returned NSF from the bank. In order to record the NSF payment, we would use the same screen as if you're recording the payment. However, this time after choosing the customer, you're going to tick this NSF box. Doing so now shows us a number of different sections. In the top section, we have a list of payments that the customer has made to us in the past. We can see the first one here is the payment which we just recorded a moment ago. After choosing the payment you want to record as NSF, the information about the payment populates, including the details of the invoices paid by the check. You then need to choose how to apply the NSF, either by restoring the individual items originally paid by the check, or by leaving those items as paid and showing a new receivable only for the amount of the NSF check. In the middle section, you will record any NSF fees charged by the bank. In this case, we'll say the bank charged us $15 and select the bank account which these fees are going to appear in, as well as record any NSF fees that you're going to charge to your customer for issuing you an NSF check. Once done, you press the Process Payment button, and you are done. We can see the results of these transactions in the Customer Account and the Customer Maintenance menu on the Transactions tab. We can see the NSF recorded along with the NSF fee which we charge to the customer. And we can also see that the ER has been restated to the customer account.